this is the last topic we're going to cover. It is probably the least likely to be seen on the AP exam. They're not going to do a lot with it, but they may ask you some of the kind of questions I'm going to ask you about. I have seen this before. Um, it's not a stressed concept. All right, uh, you're going to see Hess's law. You know, adding up the, the reactions. You're going to see simple uh, enthalpy reactions and, and Gibbs free energy all over the place. All right, but internal energy probably not so much because really internal energy combines physics and chemistry. It wants the entire energy contained within a particular system. Okay, all the energy, and some of that energy is the kind of energy we've been covering so far. You might say, well, haven't we been doing that? Hasn't that been what like delta H has been? Delta H has been enthalpy. And we've included all the energy that's involved in a chemical reaction. Well, no, actually it's not. Okay? Because the fact is, we all know this. If I'm if all you measured back in those calorimeters, those those coffee cup calorimeters, all you measured was the heat change, the temperature change, and the mass of it, and then you're able to figure out how much heat. But what you really didn't, it didn't really happen back there, so it wasn't a big deal. Sometimes there's actually kinetic energy, like physics kind of work done. What's, what's work in physics? What's the uh, definition of work in physics? No. A force. A force moved through a distance. Exactly. All right. Sometimes that happens in a chemical reaction as well. For example, a lot of force is given off by explode dynamite, right? A firecracker, all right? And a lot of a force, a lot of things are moved around. And I'm not including that if all I'm measuring is the heat. All right, I have to include all the work that's done as well. So the kinetic energy as well as the heat energy has to be included to include all of the energy in the reaction. Okay? Now I have a couple little demos that weren't even on the video. I know a couple people watched the video ahead of time, uh, Lexi in particular. Um, but I got a couple little demos I'm going to show you on here to illustrate this point for you, for me. Okay, I'm going to take this syringe. I'm going to add some baking soda to it. Now this is a classic reaction we've all seen a hundred times. Probably when you're a little kid you did it when you did um, baking soda and vinegar. Well, I'm going to put some baking soda into just this little cap here because I don't want it to get mixed up until I'm ready for it to get mixed up. All right. So I put this in this little cap, and I'm going to take the top off of this. Oh, I spilled some. It's only baking soda. It's okay. Take the top off of this. I'll slide that down here so it doesn't spill too much. And I'll put the lid back on. Now, I'm going to cap. Oh, I'm not going to cap it yet. I'm sorry. I'm going to get some vinegar now. So, here's my vinegar. Pour some of this in here. Now, if I were to carry out this reaction and have a thermometer in a, uh, in a cup, I would probably measure some kind of temperature change. Okay? But that's not all the energy involved. Because watch what happens when I go and suck some of this stuff up in here. Okay? I may have to move this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to suck some vinegar up into here. So that I have vinegar in here as well. See the vinegar in there? Oh! <laughs> it's peeing. <laughs> it's only vinegar. It's okay. I don't want to mix them up yet, so I'm gonna get the cap on real quick. There, there it is. All right. Now I want to make sure you can see it for the folks at home when I react it. I, I guess you can see it right about there. Okay. Now I'm gonna mix these guys up. I'll turn them upside down. I'll mix them up. I got the cap on. And you watch what happens. Actually, maybe I'll just do this. Okay, watch what's happening to this. Can you see it? Yeah. I mean, it's not really a surprise. A gas was given off, and that's forcing this guy up. That's the deal. I can't measure that with just a thermometer. I have to measure that some other way. I have to measure that, like I'm measuring it right here, all right? A force moved through a distance. This started out down here and it ended up up there. Okay, that's work as well. That's energy as well. So internal energy includes both. Like a piston in your car works like this. Okay, let me put this down. Okay, if you watch, this is how a car, your car runs. Basically, uh, the fuel comes in. I'll show you with the fuel coming in right now, filling it up. Okay, 
A spark happens in the spark plug, an explosion happens that pushes this down. It, it, it increases in volume, pushes down the cylinder. When it comes back up, it exo the exhaust, um, the uh, gases are, the exhaust is given <coughs> off, and then it fills back up again on the next turn around. So that, it drives your car like this. Okay? As each piston goes up and down, it's converted into a rotary motion, and that's how you get to school today. That's how you got to school today. Okay? And that's all pressure volume work. Increasing the pressure in this a piston is, is, is a force that's driving this whole thing. And that's how your car runs. I bet you didn't know that. Maybe you did. Okay? That's why you need spark plugs. That's why you need gas coming in here. It's why you have an exhaust pipe. Basically, all the parts are right there that you see in a car. And that's all called pressure volume work. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, the concept I just went over with you is pretty easy. The terminology is a little confusing, but the problems are also very easy. Okay, watch. Um, that's the equation you're going to have to use. That's where we left off. The total internal energy, the change in energy, takes into account both Q, which we know to be the heat energy, right? Q is the heat energy. We've been calculating Q all chapter long. We can either use MC delta T, if we have a physical change, we can measure with a temperature and a mass. Or we could use delta H of the reaction equals delta H of products minus delta H of formation of the reactants. We can even calculate the energy if we know the bond energies like we did yesterday, reactants minus products. But that's Q. That's all we've been doing for this entire chapter. Now, Snyder, Schrader, over in the other room, he works mostly with forces move through a distance, the W. This equation puts physics together with chemistry and, and gets the final answer there, okay? And now, here comes the difficult part as far as terminology. It's not really that bad. It's not really that bad, I don't think. Okay? First of all, let's go over what we do know. The Q, we do know already, is the heat that's absorbed and released by the system. We've been calculating that all year. Not all year, all chapter. And we know how to do that. What do we call it if it's a negative? If Q is negative, what is that? What kind of a reaction is that? Exothermic and heat is no no and heat is done what release or absorbed in exothermic release okay heat is uh, oh, I did it backwards but oh, oh I, well either way he I, I want to do the endo for whatever a positive is an endothermic and absorbed negative the heat is released and it's exothermic okay so you were right I just had to go over the board the opposite way so we know that no one's surprised by that. What I have to explain now is the new terminology. Is work done by the system or is work done on the system? Is that system work is that work positive or is that negative? And this is where it can get confusing. As a matter of fact, Schrader had to take um, he's he's practicing for the um, uh, certain kind of certification you can get, nationally certified teacher. And you have to take these exams. And the exams have stuff like that he hasn't covered. And he said one of the things, he, you know, he has to have those stuff about chemistry and biology and everything. And one of the things even that still drives him crazy is doing these kind of things. Remembering if work is done on or by the system. And it is one of those things that's just confusing. I hate, for example, when we get to um, redox reactions and, their, and then um, electrochemistry, there's another terminology thing. What's the anode and what's the cathode, positive or negative? It depends on how you look at it. And it's really kind of confusing. All right, so let's take a look here. That we already know. Here's the new part, W. W is the work done on or by the system. And that's what's weird. Let's go back to my syringe here. Okay, let's go back to my syringe. You all saw what happened when that reaction took place. Reaction happened in here. If I had a thermometer in there, I could have measured Q if I knew the masses. I could have measured it some other way, too. I could have measured... Um, uh, the uh, if I knew the the delta H the formation and the entire equation that happened I could have measured it that way, but either way, I could have calculated it that way I should say. Either way, that would only be one part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is how much this guy moved up. Now, what do we call that? What must have happened here? This guy gave off energy to move this. Isn't that correct? This guy did work. He did work. He moved the piston. He moved the syringe. We call that. Work done by the system onto its surroundings. The surroundings being this, in this case, the uh, the piston. And that's not piston. That's upriver. 
Pittston. Yeah. Pittston. Really? You don't know Pittston? Uh -huh. What? Yeah. yeah, no, I got it. You got it. You just, yeah. just, it, well, it just wasn't funny. All right. It's negative, and this actually makes sense, because what do we think of negative things as being? Things that give off energy, correct? So this is giving off energy. It's doing work, all right, work done by the system onto its surroundings. And that generally accompanies a volume increase. When the volume's increasing, work must have been done, all right, by the system. It made that piston go up. Vice versa. If you have a positive answer for your calculation, which I'm going to show you how to do some of these calculations in a minute, work is going to be done on the system from the surround. In other words, if I'm pushing down on it, I'm doing work on the system. And that generally accompanies a compression, if you're talking about pressure and volume, which is what we're going to be talking about here. Up till now, we've been talking mainly about temperature changes. Here we're talking about PV changes based on the temperature being kept virtually constant. At least we're not including that in that part of the equation. We may include it over here in the Q, but we're not including it in the W. All right. So what kind of questions can I get from all of this after you copy this down? They really, I mean, that may be a little confusing, and it may be a pain in the neck memorizing which one's positive and negative. The way I like to think about it, guys, there really is no contradiction here. If you think about it, and for me, I'll about for you, but don't you, isn't X so easy to remember? Seems to me X is always easy to remember. Think of exit, expel, excrete, give off. Gives off energy. And we've kind of memorized by now, because we've been doing this for a month, that XO is negative, right? All right, well, does it also make sense that this guy would be negative if he's doing work? Sure, he's giving off energy and moving a piston. That makes sense that he's negative, okay? So I try to keep one of the two straight in my head, and then the other one's going to always be the opposite. All right, let's do some examples. Here's the first one. Copy that question down. And by the way, you might want to do this too, Lexi. I, I did actually change a few things and added some stuff. Last time, I, if you watched the video from this, I am going to change this video. I'm going to use today's video probably. If you watched last video I had from last year, I just talked about this example. I didn't actually do one. I'm going to do this example for you. Not just talk about it. Because you can get a question like this in the test. All right. Given this equation, can you tell me if energy was, was uh, if work was done by or on the system? And therefore, whether work would be negative or positive without even doing a calculation? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes, we can. Here's how. It all has to do with how many moles of gases you have formed. Kind of like when we were talking about entropy. We were looking at how many, you know, like, do we have a liquid over here and a gas over here? Entropy increased. You know, we were looking at, oh, we had three gases over here and only one gas over here. Entropy probably decreased, right? Same thing's true here. I've got two moles of gases on the left side, but I've got how many moles of gases on the right side? Three. I've increased the number of moles of gases, two here and one there, right? I've increased the number of moles of gases. Guess what that's going to mean? That's going to mean that my container expanded. And it had to have expanded. It had to push that piston, that extra mole of gas. Because let's not forget how moles are related to volume. One mole of any gas fits in this box, remember? And what is it? Remember the number? 22.4. Mole of 2.4 liters fit in one mole of any gas. So if I have two boxes on this side, but I've got three boxes on that side, that all had to have expanded. The volume had to have expanded because moles and volumes are directly related, right? Directly related. So basically, my answer is very simple. Uh, what do you think? Was work was work was done by the system, which makes it what positive or negative? Negative. So work W is negative, and work was done by the system. Now, hold on a second. That's the only question I asked you here. Just because work was done by a, the system, what if I were to have asked, and it's negative, work is negative. I'm not, what about Q? What about Q for this guy? 
I didn't ask it in the problem. But what would Q be if I were to take the delta H's of formation from this sheet, the same sheet we've been using all, you know, chapter long. Where is that sheet? Right here a minute ago. There it is. I want you to get that sheet out. Take a look at it. <clears throat> okay, this is a really easy calculation to do. The Q, is, or, the delta, or delta H, either way you want to calculate it, is going to be the delta H of the products minus the delta H of the reactants. Correct? Well, it's really easy to do because what do you think the delta H of the products is going to be in both cases? Zero. Why are they zero? Because they're both in their standard states. H2 gas, O2 gas. So it'd be zero plus zero minus what? <clears throat> minus what? Two. Two times whatever H2O gas is actual energy of formation is. That's what the formation is. If I look at water gas, it is a negative 241.8. Is that correct? Negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay? A negative times a negative is a positive value, right? And it's going to be what? Twice that or 483.6? Is that right? No, 0.2, I mean, right? 0.2. 483.2, I think. No, 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 43. Do it in a calculator. I'm very bad at math in my head. 0.6. It is 0.6? Okay. Now, my point isn't getting that number. My point is this. Okay, what's the question here? Lex, what's up? Maggie? What? You sure? Okay. All right, look it. Do you notice something about this? The work we all agreed was negative. It was done by the system onto the piston because I got more moles of gas. But Q wasn't negative. What was the Q or delta H? It was positive. Could you have figured that out without doing this calculation? Sure. Does water naturally, spontaneously go from this to separate it into hydrogen and oxygen, do you think? No. I did do that. Do you remember how I separated water into hydrogen and oxygen and then lit, lit them both on, lit one on fire? Remember how I did that? That thing up there. Remember that big orange thing up there? I had two containers, one side of the other, they're way behind the fuel there. And I, and I passed electricity through it. Remember that? Hydrogen on one side, oxygen on the other side. Well, we did. Okay, those of you who were in the class did that. Okay? And, of course, I had to add energy to it. So does it make sense that this guy's endothermic as far as the reaction goes? Yet... He would actually do work if he did that. It would actually do work because it would be creating a gas and driving a piston. Or driving two pistons <laughs> to piston. You could drive your pistons to piston. <sighs> it's not very funny. Okay. All right. Can you figure out what this guy would be? Just I, I only wanted to do that one with I did both. But this one I only want to know is work done on or by the system. That's a simple kind of question you might get on a test. Will this guy's work be done on or by the system? What do you think this time? I was going to ask you. Oh, yeah, question? Okay. Um, will we ever have to use for work force times distance? Well, I'm going to go into that next board. We'll talk about that in a minute. The answer is yes and no. <laughs> well, he asked if we ever have to use force times distance to fi figure out work. And the answer is yes and no because, yes, uh, you're going to use the equivalent of that in chemistry. But no, not actually force times distance. And I'll show you why they're both the same, using pressure and volume. Anyway, what do you think about this guy? Pressure Is work done on or by the system in this case? Work is going to be done on the system because he is going to compress, isn't he? Okay, so W, oopsie, W is positive, which means work is done on the system. Okay, work is done on the system, not by it. Got it? All right. So I, the questions I told you all, as complicated as I'm making this when I'm talking about it, the concept is comp is kind of complicated. It's going to be really complicated after this next example. This one, next one's pretty easy, too. Uh, okay, how I could also ask it this way. 
Calculate the internal energy change of a system that performs 57 kilojoules of pressure volume work, that is the syringe or piston work, and then also gave off 1750 joules of heat. This is, I want you to think again about this question. The main thing you have to do in this is basically realize whether you have a positive or a negative value for each. That's the key. Is work positive or is work negative in these cases? So you have to read carefully. That's why this question is worded the way it is. You have to read it carefully. What's in that red solo cup, Mr. Holmes? Red solo cup. I you up. I know. You did totally ignore me. So, <laughs> um, so, what's my equation for this? Well, the equation is the total energy change is going to equal the Q plus the W. Okay? Now, again, there's a lot of ways I can calculate Q. Last time I calculated using delta H of formation. I could calculate it using MC delta T. In this case, I'm told it. Which one of those numbers, 57 or 1750, is Q? Think before you yell out an answer. Which one's Q versus W? W being the physics, Q being the chemistry. What do you think? The 1750 is, 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 is the chemistry part, right? That's how much heat was given off. So the delta E is going to equal basically 1750 joules of heat, okay? By the way, this guy's in kilojoules, right? So I'll have to convert one to the other. Does it matter which one I convert? No. So we'll leave it for the second one to make it a little bit easier. I think in the, in the video I did the opposite way. But it doesn't really matter. 1750 joules. Okay. Plus. Oh, is that positive? I saw, here, I'm skipping ahead. I said you have to read carefully. That's how much energy was released. Is that a positive or a negative value? Negative. So don't forget to put your negative sign in front of it. Now, I have to add to that the amount of work that was either done on or by the system. Was this guy, since he performed that much work, he must have moved the piston. Was that number going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. Negative 57 kilojoules. Now, 57 kilojoules, I have to convert one of these other. I'll convert this guy. Kilojoules on the bottom, joules on the top. One kilojoule contains 1,000 joules. That gives me 57,000 joules. And again, i got to do this math in my head, which I'm not really good at. Um, I think that would be 5875. Is that right? So, Oh, you know what? It's only two significant figures, so it would be easy enough. It would be 50, 59, right? 59,000. And that's your answer, 59,000. Okay? All right. Oh, right, right, right. Good point. And there, since it's a negative plus a negative, that's why I added them together. But definitely, a negative is a fine answer. So, by the way, is this endo or exothermic? Exo. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not done. I know you wish I was done, but I'm not. I told you I'd link these all together with physics. I wanted to kind of show you how it works. So pay attention to this. There's, I don't think there's any way you're going to be asked this next board, okay, as far as on the AP. I don't think this is going to really come into play, but I'm doing it to lead me into something that will be on the test, okay? If you guys can find for me, once you get that copy there, find for me your uh, sheet of the formula card for the AP I gave you. Okay, find that for me. And uh, I want to talk about this. These, all these highlighted in yellow are ones we've done already. I want You don't have to highlight them right now, but I want to talk to you about what, where I'm going with one of these. So you all have them in front of you. Now, of course, most of the yellow highlighted ones that I've been doing on here 
are on the thermochemistry, electrochemistry box on this thing. Okay, most of them are there. There's one guy who's going to be really, really weird. And you're going to want, well, the, the last two you have no idea because they have to do with electrochemistry. But the next to last one, I got to show you where that, came, where that comes from eventually. And we'll eventually get there to that equation. Okay, and I'm going to show it to you here by talking, linking physics and chemistry again. All right, write this. This is a little derivation of where this equation comes from. This equation that I'm going to use eventually. Everybody has to, I'm going to show you why work, pressure, or I'm sorry, a force move through a distance is the same as a pressure times a volume. Okay? Because you all know physics, Schrader called work a force times a distance. Okay, let's look at the units of that. Okay, a force times a distance. Isn't pressure a force per unit area? And isn't volume a distance cubed? Write all that down and let me show you why that is correct. I didn't just make that up. I'm sorry. Okay. I think you can see this a couple of different ways. You ready? Obviously, if I push on this, I am pushing, creating a force, and I'm moving the plunger through a distance. That makes sense. So wh that's what, wh but if we look at it, it's exactly the same as a force moved through a distance pushing on this wall as a pressure times a volume. Because a force is, I'm sorry, pressure is a force per area. The area of this flat surface that I'm pushing, the, the, pushing against the plunger. I multiply that by a volume. This volume change, pressure times volume, is exactly the same as a force times a distance because what would happen to distance? Wouldn't that happen? Right? Yep. See what I'm saying? Force times distance, because you have a force. Pressure is a force per square inch or whatever. Volume is a, you say, well, how, I don't get why volume is a cubic distance. Yes, you do. How do we measure volume? In milliliters, correct? What's another name for a milliliter if you're t getting a shot? A cc. How many cc's of uh, whatever you're going to get a shot of? What does cc stand for? cubic centimeters. A distance cubed. A distance cubed divided by a distance squared, that's the, the, the force per area, is a force times a distance. Crazy, I know, but physics and chemistry are related. All right, let's keep going from there. Didn't you remember measuring work in Newton meters? Remember Newton meters? That was the way you measured work. So Newton Per, newtons per meter squared would be the way you measure pressure, and meters cubed is the way you measure uh, volume. They're equal. And does anybody remember that name for a newton meter? Say it. Jules. Jules. Exactly. The family Jules. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so that's why. P times V is work. Pressure times volume is the same as work. Joules is joules. Okay? And that's work is PV. P times V. By the way, that V has to be a change in V. VF minus VI. Like we always do the final minus the initial. Okay? If you do it that way, it makes sense. Because think about it. If the VF is bigger... It's going to be a negative uh, sign, or that's going to be a positive minus a negative, or a bigger minus a smaller. I have put a negative in front of it, showing that energy was released by that. Okay? That's why it's negative in front of it. Now it's time to bring in our old friend. Say hello to my little friend. You better have him. Me <laughs> Okay. All right, remember this, friend? Don't write this down. Remember PV equals NRT? Yeah. 
What is that called? You remember it? Nope. The ideal gas law. Remember the ideal gas law? We could solve for P, pressure, volume. N was what? No, R was the no, constant. N was moles, and T is obviously temperature. We used this a bunch in two different chapters last year in Chem 1. PV equals in RT. Hey, guess what then? PV also equals work. So guess what work equals? NRT. I know. It's crazy. But I can actually calculate. I'm going to show you in five minutes, not even, how to calculate an actual numerical answer for a chemical reaction. Well, all I know is the equation. Just the equation. Just this. Just like 2A plus B yields 4C. Just knowing that, I could use PV, if they're all gases, I could use PV equals NRT to calculate work. How? I'll show you. No. <laughs> By the way, I know I lost half of you about, you know, three months ago. <laughs> I, I'm still doing this anyway. Copy that down. So what I'm saying by this, oh, this whole long sentence here is if I use the ideal gas law at ideal conditions, which we can use all the time. I mean, when we're doing a kind, they're going to assume that ideal conditions, I'm sure, when they give you a problem. Um, the change in the number of, uh, the change in the number of moles is going to be proportional to the change in the volume. They're going to be basically the same. So PV equals NRT. That's our equation. I just put the little change in, change in, okay? Delta PV, I mean, sorry, delta V and delta N. Therefore, work equals negative change in N, R, T. This has to be the most convoluted, because I haven't even gotten to the final equation. We won't get to that until we talk about the uh, um, equilibrium chapter when we get to K, because K is going to replace in there somehow the change in moles, and you'll see why when we get to that. But for now, work can be calculated. Thermodynamic work can be calculated by using this crazy equation. Somehow substituting in the ideal gas law. Okay, and delta N has to be pro the number of moles of product minus the number of moles of reactants, products minus reactants. This class is felt like it's about 48 days long, this one class. I know that. Not 48 minutes, but 48 days. But we're almost done. I got one example to do. I just find this ama amazing, really. One of the reasons I cover this, even though I don't think, like I said, this will be the least likely to be seeing anything like this on the AP exam. Uh, it is leading us into an equation that you will see. Okay, that's number one. And number two, I just find it pretty fascinating that I can do the next example based on this. Here's the next example. Copy that guy down. Assuming ideal gases. Can you tell me how much work was done on or by this system? And that's all I give you. You don't look anything up. And the answer is, yeah. Just have to use that equation. Just have to use that crazy equation. You realize if I had done this chapter first, I'd have about half the size of my classes right now. <laughs> And that's not exaggeration. <laughs> Thank God we do organic first. Everybody's missing organic now. Okay. So what's the equation?
work equals negative delta n r t. Do we know all these things? Let's take them one step at a time. We know what delta n is. It's the number of moles final minus the number of moles initial. How many moles do I have on this side? Two. I have how many on that side? So it's going to be two. It's going to be negative two minus three. Okay. Then r. Now, you, I know what you want to put for r, but it would be wrong. That's why I told you to get this, this paper out. One of the things I highlighted on this paper is r over on this side. The gas constant is given to you in the paper. You don't have to memorize it, obviously. But notice there are three gas constants, depending on what you want to use. In Chem 1, we always use this one, 0.0831 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. You know why we use that one? Because the equation we were using was PV equals nRT. Sure enough, liters, volume, atmospheres, pressure. Kelvin, temperature, moles, N, made sense to use that one. Which one of those do you think I'm going to use now? Look at my equation. Which one do you think I'm going to use? 8.314. Exactly. 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Eight point three one four joules per mole Kelvin. Don't have to memorize it; it's right there. And finally, for the temperature. And by the way, that should have been in the question up here. Most of these guys are done at the same temperature. I told you in the back of the book. Assuming the temperature is two ninety eight point one five Kelvin, right? That's the temperature that's in the back of the uh, of that sheet. Okay, that's your temperature in Kelvin: two ninety eight point one five Kelvin. Okay, so what are you doing? A negative times a negative 1 is a positive 1. So all you got to do is multiply these two guys together. And you can tell how much work would be done by this equation at that temperature. What does that answer? It will have 1, 2, 3, 4 significant figures. What would you get, Galen? 2,479. Joules. Because moles cancel. With moles, how does moles cancel? Because this is two moles minus three moles. So these are moles. Kelvin cancels with Kelvin. You're left with joules. That is your answer. All that derivation, all that other crap, and it was, you know, pretty much garbage for most of you because you're not going to remember any of it. But it does explain to you why this works, where that equation comes from, and where we're going to go with that equation in the future when we get to equilibrium. Yay. Okay.